All right, you degenerates. Bruh. This guy right here, he just got fired. Hot off the presses, John Ricitalia resigns. Okay, here's the, here's first off. Here's a little here's a little uh, little fact of life. Okay, and I, I, this is very important to understand. No CEO after a major public scandal resigns. Okay, he didn't go. You know what? I messed this up. Here's my resignation letter. Find somebody better. Okay, this is not some really respectful thing where you see in those movies where the people are just like, my king, I have failed you. Take my sword, right? Like, this, this is not him. This is not what's happening. Everybody else told him that he has to forcefully resign, okay? So C the, the CEO uh, has announced that he's retiring from the company effective immediately. The news comes almost a month after the company announced plans to introduce a controversial install fee for developers, which resulted in an industry-wide backlash. Now, we've gone through this what does it mean? They're talking about, I mean, they had all sorts of crazy things announced in the plan. At one point, they just said all install. So then, of course, automation. Does automation kick off those things? What about pirating? What about denial of wallet attacks? And then they said, okay, no, we're not going to do that. It's only going to be new installs for people on accounts. Uh, like, so if one person installs it on Steam and then they install it again, you only get one charge because it's too, you know, Two two non unique installs, uh, and it's all self reporting, which obviously means that it's not going to be self reporting here within a year, within two years, whatever it's going to be. They're going to build out software for to be able to track you. Blah 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 blah. A lot of people are kind of surprised about this whole situation that went on. I am sure nobody's surprised that the CEO got fired at this point. I think this is a completely reasonable stand. But this, you know. The problem is, is that everybody who uses Unity and everybody who is a part of this situation should really try to understand what is all of this about. Why are they charging a per install fee? Well, first, you got to understand a little something about stocks, okay? And I think this is really, really, really important to understand. Unity is not that old, okay? So why would a company ever go public? Well, there's really only two possible reasons to go public for a company. First one is that the, the, the C-suite and the people who own stock really want to start being able to cash out on these deals without having to raise some sort of private equity f uh, fund. Instead, they want to be able to go out, have the wide range, and they want to be able to make liquidity into their stock. Uh, that's not a very strong or compelling reason at all, and it would make no sense to really do that as a company. The second and really the primary reason why any company tend to go public is that they need to be able to raise an incredible amount of capital to go, say, from $500 million a quarter to $5 billion a quarter. That's how you do it. They offer 20% of their company, 30% of their company, 50% of their company, or whatever it is, at some $60 per share. And then they get a huge amount of public money, hoping that it's, A, it's way better than having VC money. Instead, you have public money. And then you raise a whole bunch of money. And then you're also having the, the beautiful effect of having liquid money, right? So this is good to understand that, right? So every company that does any of these things, you should, you should look through this, right? Yeah, yeah, reason number two is right. Number one is one I've heard people talk about. I've never really actually seen it done. Number two is it should be purely done for expansion. I've heard companies literally state, we are doing this as liquidity stuff for our employees, blah, 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 which just sounds bogus to me. Um, okay, so now that we got that under the way, the next most important number is this thing right here, which you should look at. Let's me, let me make sure it's in the, uh, in the chart so you can see it, is their basic numbers, okay? They made $500 million in a single quarter, right? That's pretty good. It's going up. Their net income is still $200 million uh, negative, meaning that they cost about $700 million to run per quarter, and they're making about $500 million. Okay, so think about that for a second. They are a largely negative company. Uh, lastly, I think it's really good to look at this. They've obviously geared up and hired tons of people to be able to do this whole publicly traded thing, to be able to do a whole bunch. And so... Are they really raising in employees? What is their cost? I don't know what all their costs and everything is. So these are all just really good numbers to understand. And the reason why I say all these things along with the whole CEO being fired is that though the CEO is being fired, though they've made a lot of good changes to their policy, they are in a bad position. Right? They're in a position in which they're going to be continuously losing money, which means that their goal is to earn more money. Now, they have an ads network. That's one way they can earn money. 
they have their per seat licensing fee, which is a one way they can earn money. Right now, that's totaling about $500 million. They still need to raise it by another 40% just to break even, just to even have a P.E. ratio. They don't even got a P.E. ratio. Their P.E. ratio should be is, 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 is a dash, okay? It doesn't exist because it's negative, okay? It, it doesn't make any sense. So obviously they can hemorrhage this kind of money because they raised billions upon billions of dollars upon IPOing. They probably have five years of runway, but at some point they need to raise their money. And so are they going to be able to do that? Well, what's their whole goal here? Their whole goal is going to be to add another fixed cost. So even though the CEO is standing down, even though all these things are happening, they still need to charge people more money. And that is why this fee is is not going to change, right? So even though this guy did the bad thing and they're just trying to save face by firing him, by making him forcefully resign, they're not changing course. And that just needs to be strongly understood, which I think just makes this completely almost a unique situation. Literally the scapegoat, right? Which is kind of good. I think that's one thing that they did is I'm happy about is that they put some guy, I'm head of game something, like as the person that did the public facing for this, this, this price plan. The CEO literally never made pretty much any single comment or anything about it, but he had to – I mean he and the other C-suite had to check it off. And so how does this affect Unity uh, as an industry standard? I think Unity is going to probably, you know, quote-unquote, be okay. I think they're going to continue on operating, and they're going to always be able to – you know, they just have a big enough war chest of money to be able to kind of plow through this time while they're trying to – Raise it, but uh, you know, my guess is what we're going to see is we're going to see some layoffs, tightening of the ship, making things more cost effective. B, they're going to push forward through this plan. C, they're going to take away self reporting. D, they're going to become very exacting for what you owe them. They're going to really get after this because they have to, right? They're going to have to to be able to make their company profitable. And the worst part about being a public company isn't that you have to make yourself profitable is that every year they want you to become more profitable. Because here's the end game is what, how, how does stock price, what's the ultimate goal of any company when it comes to stock? The ultimate goal of any company when it comes to stock is to raise their stock continuously. And one of the best ways, or to provide value continuously, shall I say. And so one of the best ways that is done is through two methods. One method is kind of like the older way that's kind of going out of touch, which is dividends. Dividends was kind of the old way, right? Yeah, dividends. We got dividends in here. That was one of the old ways in which we used to deliver value. The second way that it happens is stock buybacks. So the company actually restarts acquiring back themselves from the public, $500 million at a time or whatever it is. I think Netflix did that in 2023, just earlier this year in March. And what that does is it, 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 it literally inflates the, the stock price because now there's just less shares available. And so it makes sense. So instead of being beholden to continuously and always buying or producing dividends and increasing the cost, instead you can just buy back periodically parts of your share, thus making a scarcity effect happen within the share. Um, uh, they can also do splits. Splits is, a, splits is a different way. Splits is largely for perception. Uh, there's, there's a bunch of theory around this. Uh, 50 to $100 stocks are bought the most by mom and pop investors. They're bought the most by non-institutional ones. Anything above is almost pure institutional buys. And so that's what they want to do is if you can become into this stock region, you get this really nice um, – you get, you get this really nice effect of, of having more and more people uh, purchase into your stock. So there you go. So hopefully you guys understand all those things because I think what you see here with the CEO is that you, what you should read in this is nothing has changed. They just want you to feel better. Nothing will change. All the same things are going to be demanded of the company. All the same things are going to be exacted from all the game developers. Unity, unfortunately, wasn't satisfied with their business model. They didn't want a couple billion a year. They wanted tens of billions a year. And this will be the cost of tens of billions a year. Now, they may end up falling off as the soup du jour of game development. And if they do, I, I mean, I think that's sad because they made a great product. But, you know, there you go. It's ironic how you, uh, Unity is fragmented. Yeah. Oh, uh, soup what now? Yeah, I know. Public companies and low confidence. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, is that I don't have a problem with publicly traded companies. I'm not, I, I, 
you know me on this kind of stuff. I, I'm kind of more in the benevolent category. I'm just more happy. Uh, didn't they revert to 2.5%? Exactly. They did revert to 2.5% to be below Unreal. They're not as feature complete as Unreal, so therefore they're not going to be as expensive as Unreal. But nonetheless, they're still, they still are increasing their charges, right? And they're going to have to find a ways to continuously monetize you. So ads are going to be pushed harder. Install fees have to be pushed harder, slash royalties, whatever you want to call it, right? They have to do something, which makes no sense. I mean, the problem is, is they have a conflicting business model, right? They did charge per seat, and now that that is not working, you know, that didn't get them where they wanted. So now they have to change into par, uh, charge per install because that's just a lot more money, right? 2.5% of the whole pot versus some fixed cost of how many people are developing. You know, as they make their product better, you need less seats, Less seats means they get less money. So it's just something, uh, just something to think about. So uh, can someone explain to me uh, people like uh, Rosalie Terello uh, land those kind of jobs despite their track record? The, <clears throat> the thing is, is that it's very easy to say, oh, these CEOs are super incompetent. But the reality is being a CEO is extremely hard. It's one of the more political jobs ever. Everybody's gunning for your job. It's an extremely difficult and awful. I mean, I personally would not want to be a CEO of a large company at all. Like that, it just it does not sound fun, right? Unless if it's a private company, you don't want to do it, right? If it's a private company and you steer the ship and you're like, I'm majority owner, fuck off, right? That would be great. But if you're not, it's really difficult, right? It would be very, very difficult. Well, that's because I am owner of a private company here, the startup. I own it. It's mine, right? Even Netflix, the, the CEO is beholden to the shareholders slash the board. The CEO of Netflix could be fired tomorrow if the board deems it correct. And so that's like a real, you know, it's a real thing is you are constantly beholden to that. Momentum is hard too. And so for me, this is, this is more of a systemic problem, which, I, okay, now I'm going to talk a little bit about philosophy, okay? We're going to do this. I don't often talk philosophical, wax philosophical about these things, but I got to do it, okay? Tell me if you agree or disagree. I think one of the biggest problems we have, I love the stock market. I want you to understand I love the stock market. I think it's one of the greatest ways for the average person to accumulate wealth by simply investing in good companies, good solid companies, and leaving their money there for 20 to 40 years. It will just, it will literally, you know, 40 x over your lifetime it's one of the greatest mechanisms ever to distribute wealth among people with wise ability right it is it's absolutely incredible but the inverse of it is that it constantly demands money and i think companies going public to ever expand and make more money is a huge mistake i think only some companies should ever do that amazon makes sense they want to try to do everything for everybody. So it takes a lot of capital to do that. Whereas Unity is just making a game engine. I think their biggest mistake was going public three years ago. I don't think they should have ever went public. I don't think they should have ever been dissatisfied with making a billion effing dollars. You know what I mean? Like, I think that I really would love to see more companies being okay with being a $100 million company. With being a billion dollar company, you don't need to be a trillion dollar company, right? You don't need to ever make more and more money. And I think it would really make a better world, I think, for everybody to have companies that weren't so that weren't so ever pursuing always like always tons of money. And so that's kind of how I feel about it. I, you know, I like again. I love the stock market. I still think it's the it's been the greatest. It's been the greatest uh, ability for the average person to gain wealth ever that has ever existed in any country. Like it's it, like anyone that can provide counter evidence to some greater vehicle. There is no greater vehicle that we know. It is one of the greatest things we've ever seen for the average individual. It also has been one of the worst things for the average individual. So it's like. Is it is it fantastic, right? Is it something that we should all think is just pure and perfect? No, I think there's a lot of problems with it, right? I don't think it's great for addicts. That's the problem. It's actually the worst for addicts. The stock market is fundamentally the worst for addicts. That's what gets it its bad uh, uh, rap, is that, A, the stock market isn't a zero-sum game. You can buy and hodl. Do what Warren Buffering does. What does Warren Buffering do? Buy low, never sell, right? Go follow someone that can make 30% year over year and just do what they do and just never change anything, right? It's just so silly. That's my take on this whole thing. 
which is that I honestly think Unity's biggest problem is they just should have never went public. They should have been satisfied. They should have been satisfied with the incredible thing they already built, with the literal – they could have been internally – think about this. Let's just invert this whole thing. You never hired a huge amount of people. You never took on a huge amount of debt. Sure, you made $100 million, $200 million, maybe $300 million as your ad network grew. You made some money, and you took all of your employees, kept giving them shares, and you started paying out internal dividends and made everybody who worked at Unity be able to retire after a decade, 15 years of working for Unity – Prove and value loyalty and just do a good private company take on these things because good private companies, that's what they do. They just, they just funnel money back to the people who hold the shares. That would have been really great. That's what I, I would love to see more of those, right? Do they exist? They exist all over the place. They just don't exist. I mean, there's not that many publicly traded companies in comparison to private companies. There's tons of private companies, tons of private companies. You know, and they, they do one of two things, private companies. They try to effectively get acquired or they start clipping tickets, right? Does Netflix do that? No, we're a publicly traded company. We, we, we do it by delivering shares. They have a very, very aggressive share uh, policy of how to give and reward employees with, with company shares. Uh, we do options. It's very great. Um, I, I am very, very happy about it. Uh, it used to be ultra aggressive. It used to be so good, but they quit that about eight years ago. It was so dang good. Um, anyways, there you go. The name is, I mean, I'm not the stockogen, but I just hope you understand that firing the CEO, all this stuff is, is really inconsequential to what's going to happen. Unity has to make more money. They're going to continuously pursue methods of making more money. And if you are relying on Unity, you just have to go in with that mentality. If you go in with anything else, you will be disappointed and you will be so so uh, sorely sad when they start dropping self-reporting and start doing install our tracking stuff because we need to ensure who's getting what. Okay? Again, like and subscribe. Press like, press subscribe. Let's go. Okay? Let's go.